hello students good morning in day before yesterday's class we completed structure of lysosomes okay mitochondria chloroplast fine hmm? as well as ribosomes in today's class we are going to study the next cell organ okay that is cytoskeleton right so let's start the next component or the next cell organelle that is cytoskeleton okay that is known as cytoskeleton hmm? we know that the meaning of term skeleton skeleton means a supportive structure right so those cytoplasmic structures which are present in cytoplasm and they give support to the cell they provide rigidity to the cell internally such structures are known as cytoskeleton there are different types of proteinaceous structures which are present in the cytoplasm they give support to the cell they maintain shape of cell they provide framework to the cell right so these structures are known as cytoskeleton so cytoskeleton these are nothing but these are the proteinaceous structures which are present in the cytoplasm right so cytoskeleton this is an elaborate network and elaborate network of proteinaceous structure of proteinaceous structures present in cytoplasm present in cytoplasm okay these cytoskeleton performs number of functions like they provide support they provide support to the cell they provide support to the cell they help in the motility they help in the movement of cell help in help in motility of a cell okay they maintain shape of cell they maintain shape of cell shape of cell as well as they form the structural framework of cell form structural they form a structural framework structural framework of a cell right so these are known as cytoskeleton okay there are three types of proteinaceous structures okay so from that first one okay these are known as microtubules microtubules second proteinaceous structures these are known as microfilaments microfilaments and third structure which is the intermediate of these two they are called as intermediate filaments okay so three types of proteinaceous structures present in the cytoplasm of a cell okay these are microfilament microtubules and intermediate filament fine hmm? now we are going to study these three structures in detail now let's start the first one that is microtubules okay we will see what are the differences in microtubules as well as microfilaments yes so let's start the first one that is microtubules microtubules fine these microtubules these are hollow tubular structures fine microtubules these are unbranched hollow hollow unbranched hollow unbranched cylindrical cylindrical tubular structures cylindrical tubular structures okay present in cytoplasmic matrix of eukaryotic cell fine these microtubules are absent in prokaryotic cells okay so present in present in 
साइटोप्लाज्मिक मैट्रिक्स प्रेजेंट इन साइटोप्लाज्मिक मैट्रिक्स ऑफ यूकैरियोटिक सेल्स ऑफ यूकैरियोटिक सेल्स these microtubules are absent in prokaryotic cells absent in prokaryotic cells absent in prokaryotic cell hmm? now in which part of cells they are present or uh, they are responsible to form which structures hmm? so they are present in present in cilia flagella okay present in cilia flagella basal granules or basal bodies okay basal granules basal body fine hmm? centrioles etc okay so they are responsible to form cilia flagella basal bodies centrioles yes? as well as spindle fibers spindle fibers asters okay spindle fibers asters etc okay? so these are the microtubules fine these microtubules they are made up of okay non contractile protein which is called as tubulin okay? made up of these contractile or these microtubules are made up of non contractile non contractile protein that is tubulin okay tubulin fine huh? this tubulin protein is a dimeric protein means it is composed of two subunits okay this tubulin tubulin is dimeric okay it is composed of two components there is a alpha subunit okay alpha subunit and beta subunit okay alpha subunit and beta subunit each tubulin protein it is made up of two components alpha subunit and beta subunit so we call it as dimeric hmm? these microtubules they are hollow just like your tube structure fine hmm? now let's see how these tubular protein they help in the formation of microtubule or how they form microtubules okay so i show you how these microtubules are formed okay as it is a tubular structure internally it has a hollow lumen or core okay the entire microtubule it has a diameter of 25 nanometer fine hmm? suppose we are studying a transverse section of this microtubule hmm? what i told you these are hollow these are cylindrical pipe like structure hmm? so this outer core yes the outer layer it is composed of protein tubulin hmm? so this layer it is made up of 13 profilaments fine 4 5 6 okay it may come more than that hmm? but while writing you write down it consists of 13 profilaments okay so these structures are known as profilament fine hmm? this is a transverse section of a microtubule fine the diameter of microtubule it is 25 nanometer fine its diameter is 25 nanometer whereas the central core is of 15 nanometer okay hmm? the central core the hollow cavity which is present inside this layer okay it is of 15 nanometer the overall diameter of microtubule it is of 25 nanometer fine so these profilament they are 13 in number this you have to remember hmm? and this outer layer it is made up of 
protein tubule hmm, that it consists of alpha subunit and beta subunit they are present in the form of dimer hmm. now i'll show you how this layer it is formed hmm. now suppose this is a tube like structure fine hmm. this is a tubular structure okay hmm. it encloses a hollow canal hmm, or the cavity whose diameter is about 15 nanometer hmm. This alpha and beta subunit they are arranged alternately hmm, and they get arranged in the form of helix or in the form of spirally coil structure. Hmm. I am using two colors for this hmm, so that you will understand. Hmm. Suppose this is a one layer hmm, of alpha subunit. Okay, they are arranged in the form of a helix or the spirally coil structure. Okay in the form of a rose yes hmm. so this is the another layer hmm. one more layer fine i'm showing this its outer view how this tubulin or microtubules are formed by spiral arrangement of okay this profilaments okay now this red one it is your beta subunit whereas this blue one this is alpha subunit fine hmm? so there is one row of alpha subunit one row of beta subunit hmm? now here you can see hmm? now here this is the upper one okay so these alpha and beta fine alpha and beta this upper one you can see over here hmm, because it is in the form of tube fine hmm? now when it goes down suppose this is the entire column yes hmm? so each profilament it is made up of alternate unit of alpha and beta subunit just try to understand how microtubules are formed microtubules these are the hollow cylindrical and branch tube like structures fine they are made up of non contractile protein that is tubulin okay tubulin is a dimer it has two components alpha subunit and beta subunit this alpha and beta subunit they are alternately arranged in the in spiral form okay that give rise to hmm, these 13 profilaments which form the peripheral or the outer coating of microfilament fine hmm? So, in this way, microtubules are produced. These microtubules they are responsible for the formation of basal granules, okay? cilia, flagella, centrioles, huh? as well as astral rays, fine, huh? spindle fibers okay? during mitosis. Okay? So, this is about the microtubule. Okay? Hmm? Now, for the assembly of this alpha and beta subunit, GTP and calcium ions are required. GTP as a source of energy it is required. Okay. Whereas calcium ions are required for association of alpha and beta subunit. Fine. Hmm? So we will mention that point for assembly of for assembly of alpha and beta subunits. GTP and calcium ions gtp hmm, it is the alternative form of atp atp stands for adenosine triphosphate gtp stands for gonosine triphosphate both are purines only calcium ions for assembly of alpha and beta subunit gtp and calcium ions are required fine hmm? so in this way tubulin hmm, help or it forms the microtubule fine now let's discuss some functions of microtubule fine hmm? now let's see what are the common or important functions performed by these microtubules okay let's see the first one hmm? it help in the formation of microtubules okay uh, or it helps in the formation of astral rays and spindle fibers. Huh? First function help in formation of help in formation of spindle 
spindle and astral rays during cell division. Okay? During cell division. Okay? In your previous standards, if you have learned the mitotic cell division, then when the cell is at metaphase stage, all the chromosomes get arranged at equatorial plane. Fine? Hmm? Now, before it proceeds to the anaphase, yes, spindle fibers, they attach to the centrosome, okay, or the centromere of the chromosome. These spindle fibers, they help in separation of homologous chromosomes or chrom homologous chromosomes or chromatids by splitting of centromere, right? So, here, these spindle fibers and astral rays, they help in the separation of homologous chromosomes so that each daughter cell would receive equal number of chromosomes, right? So, these spindle fibers, astral rays, they are formed by microtubules, right? The next function of microtubule, okay? They form cytoskeleton. They form cytoskeleton of cilia and flagella okay hmm? now after this we are going to study the structure of cilia and flagella also that time we will see that how the cilia and flagella they are made up of this microtubule hmm? flagella of bacteria that structure it is different that already we have seen okay in case of your first uh, or in the first lesson here we are going to study the structure of eukaryotic cilia and flagella. So these eukaryotic cilia and flagella they are made up of microtubules. Right? The third function, they help in generation of or they help in generating the shape. They help in generating, they help in generating shape. Rigidity, generation of shape, rigidity and form of a cell, okay, and form of a cell, okay, also help in cell motility, okay, also help in cell motility, okay, so the overall shape of a cell, overall form of a cell that is also decided by this microtubule. Hmm? They help in the movement of cell. Okay? They are also involved in the intracellular transfer of nutrients. Right? Also involved in intracellular transport. Intracellular transport of nutrients intracellular transport of nutrients and inorganic ions okay intracellular transport of nucleus and inorganic iron hmm? it also help in the formation of cell plate okay hmm? so it determines the position of position of cell plate okay hmm? it position or it helps it determine the position of cell plates at the time of cytokinesis in plant cells right so this is the first component of cytoskeleton these are called as microtubules right now let's study the next component that is microfilament okay the next component of cytoskeleton is microfilament okay now microfilament these are solid rod like structure the basic difference between microfilament and microtubules is that microtubules these are hollow cylindrical structure okay whereas microfilaments these are rod like solid structure and they are short okay as compared to microtubules right so now let's start the next one that is microfilaments okay so microfilaments these are micro second component of cytoskeleton that is microfilament okay microfilament these are solid and rod like structures solid 
रॉड लाइक प्रोटीनिशिय स्ट्रक्चर प्रोटीनियस स्ट्रक्चर्स ठीक है प्रेजेंट इन द साइटोप्लाज्मिक मैट्रिक्स ऑफ यूकैरियोस अगेन दे आर एब्सेंट इन प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल दीज माइक्रोफिलामेंट आर मेड अप ऑफ अ प्रोटीन मेड अप ऑफ प्रोटीन कॉल्ड एक्टीन इट इज मेड अप ऑफ अ प्रोटीन कॉल्ड एक्टीन एंड स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ अनादर प्रोटीन दैट इज मायोसिन ओके एंड सम मायोसिन प्रोटीन मायोसिन प्रोटीन सो द मेन कंपोनेंट ऑफ माइक्रोफिलामेंट इज एक्टिव फाइन इन एडिशन टू एक्टिन देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ मायोसिन प्रोटीन ऑल्सो दिस टू नेम्स यू माइट हैव हर्ड इन केस ऑफ योर मसल सेल्स Fine. The muscle protein. These are also actin and myosin. Okay. Hmm? Now, this actin. It is a filamentous protein. You will see later bit its structure. Hmm? This actin protein is a filamentous protein. Fine. Hmm? It is present in the form of a thread-like structure. Okay. It is not hollow from inside. It does not have lumen inside. Okay. So it is a hollow. It is a filamentous protein. This actin it is made up of again smaller units, okay, which are globular in nature. Globular protein, okay. So these are known as hmm, G actin. This is known as G actin or globular actin, and the whole filament which is formed by union of this G actin. That is known as F actin. Hmm? F is for fibrous, or it is for the filamentous. Okay, hmm? so this microfilament or this actin is a filamentous protein. Actin is filamentous or fibrous protein. Filamentous or fibrous. Okay, it is thread-like. It is thread-like. Okay, and composed of Composed of G actins. Okay, hmm? G actins stand for globular. As its monomers, they are oval in shape. They are globular protein. Hmm? So these proteins are known as G actins. When these G actins they unite with each other and form a thread-like structure that forms the F actin. Fine. Hmm? Now they are much smaller in size as compared to microtubule. The diameter is about six to seven nanometer. Okay, hmm? diameter of microfilaments. Diameter of microfilaments is nearly six to seven nanometer. Okay, hmm? six to seven nanometer. Now these structures are usually found in microvilli. Okay, huh? Usually found in, usually found in microvilli. Okay, then cytoplasm of a cell, microvilli, cytoplasm of a cell. Okay, huh? So in case of microvilli, as you know that these are the increased surface area of a cell. Okay. To increase the surface area, hmm? so internally these rely on extended processes. They need a support. So that support it is given by this microfilament. These microfilament they enter in this microvilli, okay, and they support this microvilli, okay. Now inside the cytoskeleton also they provide the support. Hmm? Uh, in case of cells which produce any type of outgrowth, okay. Hmm? So at the time when the cell produces any type of outgrowth, that time to support that structures, these microfilaments they help. Okay. So we will discuss some functions of microfilaments. Fine. So these microfilaments, 
they support the plasma membrane okay hmm? as they are present near to this plasma membrane they provide support to this plasma membrane plasma membrane has a fluid nature okay it is not solid so it is very important to provide support to the plasma membrane so it provides support hmm? functions of microfilament provides support it provides support to plasma membrane okay it forms a contractile system of a cell as i told you whenever any cell is contracting okay as well as relaxing this is because of the microfilaments okay so forms contractile system it forms contractile system of a cell system of cell okay as well as it helps in amoeboid movement of cell help in amoeboid movement amoeboid movement of a cell amoeboid movement of a cell okay the third function it helps in formation of pseudopodia okay helps in formation of helps in formation of pseudopodia helping formation of pseudopodia and the fourth function it helps in the cleavage division okay so cleavage during cell division helps in cleavage helps in cleavage during cell division okay so at the time of cell division when two cells are separating from each other okay that time it helps in the cleavage or it helps in the formation of furrow fine so these are some functions of microfilaments fine hmm? and the third component of cytoskeleton these are intermediate filaments hmm? as they have thickness or diameter in between these two these are called as intermediate filaments fine hmm? so intermediate filaments these are non contractile hollow filaments third type intermediate intermediate filaments intermediate filaments okay these are non contractile non contractile hollow filaments hollow filaments of acidic proteins hollow filaments of acidic proteins okay now they perform a function they help in the formation of scaffolds scaffold means in the form of layers yes huh? help in formation of help in formation of scaffolds for chromatin scaffolds for chromatin and in forming a basket in forming a basket surrounding two nucleus forming a basket surrounding two nucleus as nucleus it is present inside the cytoplasm it also needs a kind of support so just outside to this nucleus a basket like reticular structure it is formed and that structure it is formed by intermediate filaments okay so these intermediate filaments they perform limited functions hmm? so these are three important proteinaceous structures cell organelle which are present in the cytoplasm of cell they support the cell okay they provide rigidity to the cell okay as well as they help in motility of cell fine hmm? so this is about cytoskeleton okay now after this we will study the next cell organelle these are centrosome and centrioles fine hmm? so what is the structure of centrosome okay and how centrioles are formed from it 
let's have the structure of next zero organelle that is centrosome and centriole. Okay, centrosomes and centrioles. Yes, sir. next zero organelle, centrosome and centrioles. Hmm? Just try to recall this cell organelle and what is the function of this. While discussing differences in plant cells and animal cells, we have seen that centrioles, these are absent in plant cells, right? But they are present in animal cells. In case of animal cells, spindles, fibers, they form from centrioles, or centrioles are present in animal cells, but they are absent in plant cells. So, centrosome, it is a cell organelle which consists of two structures that are centrocentrioles. So, each centrosome, it is made up of two centrioles. These two centrioles, these are also known as diplosomes, fine. These two centrioles, they are placed at a right angle of each other, okay. At the time of cell division, these centrosome or centrioles, they duplicate. So, in a replicating cell, Two centrosomes are formed. These two centrosomes, or from that one, moves to the opposite pole, and then it forms the spindle fiber so that uh, newly formed daughter cells or both the daughter cells would receive one one set of centrosomes. Right? So these centrosomes, these are the cell organelles. Each centrosome consists of two centrioles. These centrioles are also known as desmosomes. And they are placed at the right angle of each other, right? So we will mention some points and then we are going to study the transverse section of centriole. Okay, so centrosome it is and cell or it is a cell organelle, it is a cell organelle containing containing. Containing two centrioles, containing two centrioles. Each centrosome consists of two centrioles. These two centrioles they are placed right angle to each other, and these centrosomes they are surrounded by the amorphous part of cytoplasm. So surrounded by a cloud of containing two cylindrical. Cylindrical centrioles. Hmm? These centromeres, these are surrounded by surrounded by cloud of amorphous pericentriolar material, surrounded by cloud of amorphous pericentriolar. Amorphous, very centriolar. Okay, because these structures they are surrounded by cloud of amorphous, very centriolar material. Amorphous, very centriolar material, which is called as centrosphere or kinoplasm, called as centrosphere. Or kinoplasm is called as centrosphere or kinoplasm. This can be asked for in situ. Just outside to the centromere, there is a layer or cloud of amorphous pericentriolar material, okay, which is called as centrosphere or kinoplasm. Now these structures, each cell organelle, it consists of two centrioles. These are the cylindrical structures. These two centrioles are also called as diplosome, and they are placed right angle to each other. Now, centrioles are also called as okay, two centrioles, as it is a group of two centrioles. Okay, centrioles, two centrioles are also called as also called as diplosome okay and are placed and are placed at a right angle to each other at a right angle to each other okay 
they have diameter okay diameter is about 0 0.50 to 0 0.25 micrometer whereas length is about 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 micrometer the diameter of this centrioles is 0 0.50 to 0 0.25 micrometers whereas length is about 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 micrometer fine then these centrioles these are membrane-less structure they do not have any membrane surrounding to it they are present in animal cell algal cell and fungal cell but absent in higher plants okay hmm? present in present in eukaryotic cells present in eukaryotic cell as i told you in case of eukaryotes present in animal cells okay along with this in algae as well as in fungi okay but absent in plant cells and prokaryotes absent in plant cells absent in plant cells and prokaryotic cells plant cells and prokaryotic cells. Find them. These are the centrosomes. Now we are going to study the transverse section of centriole. Okay, how the centriole it looks. The transverse section of centriole it is known as cartwheel structure because it looks like a cartwheel of a bullock cart. Okay, so the transverse section is known as cartwheel structure right now let's see the structure of transverse section of centriole okay now this transverse section if we observe the cut section or the transverse section of centriole it just look like a cartwheel so this it is known as cartwheel structure or cartwheel like structure of centriole cartwheel like structure of centriole first we will draw the diagram okay i will explain the structure and then we will write down notes if it is required right now if we see the transverse section at the center we find that there is a protein core okay this protein core it is known as central hub okay this protein core the radial rod is known as hub central hub okay or central rod okay so hub or central rod okay this is also proteinaceous in nature okay hmm? these are also proteinaceous hmm? what we are studying we are studying the transverse section of centrio at the center there is a rod like structure hmm? That rod like structure is known as hub or central rod. Okay, it is made up of protein. Now, from this hub or central rod, there originates nine proteinaceous structures or nine radiating arm like structures. Okay, there are nine hmm, peripheral structures, radiating arms. Okay, one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I will just arrange this properly, fine, hmm? so from the center there forms 9 proteinaceous elements okay, or structures which move or radiate toward the periphery. Now these peripheral structures, these are known as a radial spoke, okay. These are known as radial spokes and these radial spokes, they are 9 in number 5. Just try to understand the structure. Based on this, we are going to learn the structure of cilia and flagella also. Okay? So when we see the cut section or transverse section of centriole, at the center we get a rod like structure which is composed, which is made up of protein, that is known as hub or central rod. From this hub or rod, there form nine radiating structures, 
which are again composed of two pieces. These are known as radial spokes. Right? Now these nine radial spokes, these are attached to the peripheral microtubules. Yes, while studying the structure of microtubules, we have seen that it forms the core of cilia and flagella. Centrioles form basal body hmm, of cilia and flagella. So cilia and flagella they are also going to form from the centriole. Hmm? So these centrioles, the periphery of these radial spokes, they are attached to a group of three microtubules at its each end. So that group it is known as triplet. Fine. Hmm? So at its end, okay, there are three structures or three subunits. Hmm? These three subunits are namely called as A, B and C subunit. Fine. Hmm? So such three subunits. One, two and three. Okay. At the peripheral side, there are three subunits of microtubules. Okay. Or three microtubules. They are attached to each other and form the peripheral part of syndriole. Fine. Hmm? So we have drawn the peripheral triplets. Okay. These are known as peripheral triplets. Fine. Now it is started looking a little bit like a cartilage. Hmm? So these are known as peri. Peripheral triplet, okay, or peripheral triplet. They are made up of microtubules, okay, made up of microtubules. Okay, there are three types of microtubules, okay, A, B, and C. Okay, three microtubules at the end of each radial spoke. A microtubule, B and C. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay, now the radial spoke of or the adjacent radial spoke, they are attached to each other by means of C to A linkage. Yeah, means there is a linkage or there is a bridge between C microtubule and A microtubule. Fine. Yeah? Bridge between C and A microtubule. That I am showing the blue color, red, and I have used. Hmm? So there is a C to A bridge. Hmm? So find hmm? C to A connection is there. Okay. Hmm? So all now this completes our card well. Find hmm? So there is a C to A connection. C to A bridge it is formed. Okay. So adjacent centrioles or this adjacent radial spokes they are attached to each other by means of C to A bridge or C to A linkage. Okay. So this is known as C A connection. C A connection. Okay. Now to support this structure there are some internal proteins also. So there are some thickenings or protein molecules, yes, which are present at the end of radial spoke as well as between these radial spokes. These are known as XY thickenings, okay. Just nothing but these are the masses of proteins, okay, which give support to these radial spokes at the end of this radial spoke okay, and in between these radial spokes fine so these are known as xy thickenings now these thickenings they are also attached to each other in this way fine these xy thickenings they are also attached to each other and gives additional support to this microtubule. Hmm? So the X thickening and this is Y thickening. Right? X thickening and Y thickening additional proteins okay, which give support to this okay, nine 
radial scope. Fine. No? Now, here you can see that the centriole at its periphery is composed of nine triplets, but at center there is no microtubule. So, such arrangement of microtubule in centrioles it is known as nine plus zero arrangement. This you have to remember very important for MCQ question can be asked on this one. arrangement of microtubules in centrioles because afterwards we are going to see in cilia as well as in flagella also. So, in centrioles, the arrangement of microtubules, there are nine peripheral triplets, okay? but at the center there is no microtubule. So, such arrangement is known as 9 plus 0 arrangement. Okay, yeah? I hope you have understood the structure. Hmm? I am going to write some points related to a structure also. Hmm? So, centrosome, each centrosome, it consists of Two centrioles with okay, two cylindrical structures. These are known as diplosome. Fine. Hmm? Each centriole internally it looks like a cartwheel. So when we take a transverse section of it, it looks like a cartwheel. Fine. Hmm? They are involved in the formation of spindle fibers. Okay, astral rays. Yes, hmm? they are present in all eukaryotic cells except plant cells as well as absolutely prokaryotic cell. Transverse section shows that there is a central rod or core. To this attached, there are nine radiating arms. Okay, These radiating arms are known as radial spokes. There are nine in number. Each radial spoke at its end attached to a group of three microtubules. These microtubules are known as yes, peripheral triplet. Each group consists of three microtubules A, B, and C. Fine. So these are known as peripheral triplets. Okay. Now these adjacent triplets they are attached to each other by means of C to A connection. So always C subunit is attached to the A subunit of next triplet. Okay. So this arrangement of microtubules in centrioles is called as 9 plus 0 arrangement. Okay. Hmm? So, this is the general structure of centriole. Hmm? I hope no need to write down notes. You can write down from my explanation or if you will draw this diagram, that would be enough. Hmm? Now, there is no membrane surrounding to it. Fine. Hmm? So, outside of this, there are masses of cytoplasm that is known as Massules, yes, above each or outside of this, as I told you, okay, there are no membranes, okay, they are not surrounded by the membrane. So, outside of this peripheral triplet, there are masses of, I'll write down here, masses of cytoplasm and protein. These are known as massules, okay, these masses are known as. Massules or pericentriolar satellite. Massules or pericentriolar satellites. Okay. Massules or pericentriolar satellites. Fine. This is the structure of centriole. Now we will discuss some functions performed by these centrioles and then we will start or then we will stop the precision. Okay, let's list out some functions performed by centrioles. Okay, so the first function it helps in formation of basal body. Okay, function formation of formation of basal body. Okay. which give rise to cilia and flagella. Okay, basal body which gives rise to which gives rise to cilia and flagella. So only I told you that just understand the structure properly because structure of cilia and flagella it is also based on the structure of centrioles. Okay. Cilia, flagella, these are the motile structures. Okay. Uh, appendages here like appendages hmm? so the part of cell from where the cilia and flagella forms or originate that is known as basal body 
that basal body is formed of the centrium. Okay. Next function hmm? form spindle fibers. Form spindle fibers. Okay, which give rise to spindle apparatus. Give rise to spindle apparatus during cell division. During cell division. Huh? As I told you at the time of cell division, chromosomes need to separate to uh, opposite poles so that each daughter cell would receive equal number of or equal sets of chromosome. For that, chromosome needs to pull away. Hmm? So, for that sake, centriose form fiber-like structures. These are known as spindle fibers. These spindle fibers, they originate or form from the centriose. Okay? So, these are two important functions which are performed by centrosomes and centriose. Okay? Hmm? So, in the today's class, we studied okay, two cell First, these are yes, these are your cytoskeleton, supportive cytoplasmic structures. Okay, it is uh, or it has three components: microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And after that, we completed structure of centrosome and centrioles. Right. In next class, we will study structure of cilia and flagella in detail. Okay. Uh, you just note down all the notes which are explained. You know, read the NCRT. And if you have any doubt in that, just send me you know, on my personal number. Okay.